Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2012 Opportunity Nations Summit. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Chris Hill, and it is an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm thrilled, I'm delighted, and I'm more than honored to be speaking before you today. You know, this event, it's about us all coming together to move our nation forward. It's about a concept that no individual should be left behind, that every single person, should they be willing to grasp it, should have access to opportunity. A little background on me. I was raised in the San Francisco area by both my mother and father, but in two separate homes, because the one that was held originally had been broken. You see, they divorced when I was six years old, and as time passed, it seemed as though my own spirits had been left broken in the way that their marriage was. I remember moving around a lot with my mother, sometimes having to stay in the rough neighborhoods. I remember my exposure to the violence and the gunshots, but worst of all, the negative influences. I think as time passed, I, I found my self-conforming to the attitudes of those around me. I didn't really care about school, my future, or pretty much anything that looked beyond the moment at hand. Up through high school, I had a similar attitude. I wasn't motivated about school. I wasn't motivated about excelling and going to higher places, and essentially, all I was really trying to do was get by. Well, having that attitude in high school actually led me to have an interaction with my principal that wasn't a positive one. You know, one day, there I am, I'm, you know, strolling down the, the hallway. I got my hat on, my matching outfit, feeling good, looking great. And he asked me to take off my hat. Now, I take it off, I walk down a little bit further, I, quick, I pull a quick double check, look back over the shoulders maneuver, I see he's not looking, I pop it right back on and keep on walking. I think I'm being slick. Of course, he catches me and lets me have it a little bit, and there ends up being some conflict and later some confrontation between him and my mother. So it starts out a little bit ugly. But I believe that as time passed, he saw that I was a good young man at heart, that I had good values, that I was a good person. You know, inside I had all of the hurt and pain from wanting my family to get back together. I had my own insecurities. I wasn't confident about my looks, my capabilities, or pretty much anything else. But I was a good young man at heart. Well, for that, that reason, one day, he referred me to this youth administrative program called Summer Search, which was about creating opportunity. The initial offer was for two free trips, an induction into a community, and a lifelong support system. But I think that as I completed the process, I ended up gaining more than I could have ever bargained for. That experience became a huge part of my life, just the process of getting to know different people and going to places that I never could have even imagined helped me to change my thinking and open my eyes to the fact that I could change my attitude, that everything was within my grasp, that all I needed to do was set my mind towards achieving it. And it was mine to have and mine to hold. That concept. That experience helped me to change the way that I thought about things. And I stand before you now as the man that I am today because of that investment process. I stand before you now a better young man because of that transformation. Currently, I'm a senior at the University of San Francisco majoring in business with a focus in finance and a minor in economics. With a 3.9 GPA, a degree right around the corner and in a and an unprecedented surge 
of motivation. I want to move forward. That's where I'm going. You know, my first paying job was at an investment company called Hall Capital, in which I did portfolio management and learned a great deal about investment. This summer, I had the privilege of doing a finance internship with Gap, in which I rotated into several different areas of finance within Gap, and I worked on several different projects within those areas, areas such as Banana Republic Real Estate and FP&A, Treasury, et cetera. And you know, when I get that paycheck, it feels exceptional. You know, after all, I am a starving student, I need the money, but <laughs> beyond that, it's not so much the paycheck itself. It's really getting up and every day coming to work, dressing and feeling professional, doing something important, something relevant. That's really the heart of it. I now pay taxes, and I am a part of this country's economic recovery. <laughs> I am now an asset and no longer a liability. And because of that, I'm, I'm so motivated to make a difference. I'm motivated to help other people. With my life, I want to do something important something relevant. I want to come up a little bit higher. And along the way, I want to help other people come up a little bit higher. That's the vision. That's my dream. That's the opportunity. And because I've been given a chance and an opportunity, I know that one day I can achieve it. Today, I'm so excited to be a part of this event, for the chance we have to unite as one, and for the chance we have here and now to invest in the future of our great nation. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that story. It's my pleasure. Thank you for sharing that story. My pleasure. So Chris, thank you. Tell us, tell us what are you up to next? What's, what's the future hold? Well, I graduate in May, and I'm currently looking at opportunities in finance, and I'm currently in the process of talking to Gap and Hall Capital, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Fantastic, fantastic. Are there any young people in this room who just want the chance to succeed, like Chris here? Any young people here? <laughs> any young people who just want a chance to show the world what you can do? Imagine how much better off our country would be if we created sturdy ladders of opportunity so that all young adults in this room had a chance to achieve their full potential. Thank you, Chris Hill. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the 2012 Opportunity Nation Summit. My name is Mark Edwards, the Executive Director of Opportunity Nation. Thank you for coming and helping us activate our shared plan to build strong pathways to school and career so that all young adults in this country have a chance to get in the economic game. But let's face it, we're also here because the American dream needs a jump start. You know this because you experience it every day. Economic mobility, that core idea of America, that idea that's part of our exceptionalism that says no matter who you are, if you work hard you should be able to do well, is slowing. There's increasing stickiness at both ends of the economic spectrum, right? Where you start in life increasingly determines where you end up. Or as a young woman in Las Cruces, New Mexico told me last year, it feels like the numbers in my zip code are determining my future more than the numbers in my GPA. This makes me incredibly angry because at the same time the education gap in this country is growing. Young adults don't have the skills to match today's jobs. Youth unemployment is at an all-time high. And in the recent job reports for August, you probably saw those buried in those numbers, was the fact that there were 453,000 fewer young adults employed in August than there were in July. Those are seasonally adjusted numbers. And in low-income communities, 
only one out of 10 high school freshmen achieves post-secondary training and success by the age of 24. One out of 10. Think about the talent we are leaving on the sidelines. So an education gap has become a skills gap, which has become an opportunity gap. Everyone here is focused on closing the opportunity gap. We may do so from different perspectives, from different points of view. We may sort of tackle the, 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 the lifeline at different points, but the, fa the fact is that we are all focused on the opportunity gap. In this room, there are 250 organizations that work with or touch 100 million Americans. Think about how much we could get done if we could align our vision. There are decades and decades of hard work and success in this room, real solutions, and we honor that. And at the same time, we are standing on the shoulders of giants before us. Think about the times we've come together as a country to make transformative leaps in opportunity. A generation expanded the vote for women in this country. A generation passed the GI Bill. A generation created the Civil Rights Movement. We must be the generation to close the opportunity gap. And in your hands right now, you have a plan to do that. A plan to do that for young adults in this country. This is your plan. These are your ideas. It came from conversations with young adults all around the country about the barriers they're facing in communities. Many, many meetings with our coalition who have helped us figure out what's actually working on the ground. Lots of meetings on the Hill with Democrats and Republicans and a continued dialogue with this really unusual policy, frame, policy group that's worked with us, with people from the Heritage Foundation, Center for American Progress, and Brookings. Three groups that don't spend a whole lot of time together. But I think with this opportunity frame, they're willing to come together around some shared ideas that'll actually make a difference. And today, we're gonna activate this plan. So quick preview on today. First, we're gonna hear from, from some incredible scholars about the state of the American dream and opportunity, and what that looks like. We're then gonna do a deep dive into what's going on with young adults, why we all need to care about this, and why it's important for the future of our country. But the bulk of today is about solutions and activating our plan, figuring out how we can make this plan real in local communities. There's plenty of work our legislators can do, but there's lots of work that we can do. And we're not gonna leave here without commitments from everybody, everyone in this room has a role to play in making this plan real. We really believe that this is the moment to come together around some shared ideas so we can make sure that this next generation of extraordinary leaders has a chance to achieve their American dream. We can do this. Let's get to work. Thank you for being here.